Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. In the past I have made lots of videos on the Weber carburetor on how to rebuild them, how they work and how to tune them. But every so often I still get the question, what's the size of carburetor I need on my engine? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Deciding what type of carburetor you need on your engine depends on many different factors. It's not only the volume of your engine, but it's also the way your engine is built. Some engines are built for performance, like race engines, and other engines are just classic engines. Every engine has a very specific capacity, depending on the way it's built. So either you have your engine specified in cubic inches, or in cc's, or in liters, it doesn't really matter. But it has a certain displacement, and it's important that the cylinder can be filled at any given time, no matter if you're running on low RPMs or high RPMs. And the way to fill the cylinder is through the carburetor. And the carburetor, therefore, has to be dimensioned. So the engine, when running on its maximum RPM, will need a lot of air to fill those cylinders, especially at those high RPMs. And that is why we use the term CFM. So cubic feet per minute. That's the amount of air and fuel mixture that we need to get into the cylinders and it's always calculated on the maximum RPM. If you go out shopping for a carburetor, you will very often see that it states this carburetor is providing so many CFMs. And that's the kind of thing you need to calculate before you decide which carburetor you're going to buy. In order to fill the cylinders with fuel and air, all air will have to traverse the carburetor and therefore the size or the opening or the barrel or of the carburetor is very important. And in fact, the barrel size is seen right here and we'll talk about this in a few minutes. But this is the main decision maker on what type of a carb you're going to need in terms of CFM. So how are we going to calculate the CFM? Well, there is a very simple formula for that. If you take the displacement of your engine, which is in cubic inch, and for those that are using metric, liters or cc's, just convert it to cubic inch. Multiply that with the maximum RPM of your engine, and then multiply it with your volumetric efficiency. And don't worry about it, I'll come back to that one. And then you divide all this by 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you have your CFM for your specific engine. Let me give you an example. Assuming that you have a 2-liter engine, which is about 119 a cubic inch, you multiply that with your maximum RPM, 7,500 RPMs, and then you multiply it with 1 for your VE, because we are having a race car which is a bit tuned, and then we divide it by 3, 4, 5, 6, and that number is a constant which we get actually from a four cylinder which is only having one intake stroke every two rotations of the crankshaft. So that gives you a number if you divide your maximum RPMs by two and then you convert your cubic inches to cubic feet and that gives you that number three, four, five, six. But don't worry about it, just use that number. That will result in a very specific number if you do the calculation and the result will be about 258 CFM. So let's say 260. And that is what I need for my two liter engine, enabled to have it breathe properly at its maximum RPM. Now the question is, what type of carburetor will I put on the car? Will I put on a single DCOE Weber carburetor? Will it be a 40 or 45? Or Will I use another carburetor? Maybe I'm using a degas or a decaf. Will I use one barrel per cylinder? Or will I use one barrel for two cylinders? Or maybe I use one barrel for four cylinders because it's not really related to Weber carburetors alone, but I'm going to give you the example on a Weber carburetor. So now let's assume that we are going to use a single Weber DCOE carburetor on that two liter engine and that it's going to feed two cylinders per barrel. Right? So we know that the CFM the engine is requiring is 260 CFM. So what is the CFM for a Weber DCOE carburetor? Which one should you take? Well, it's going to be determined really by the opening of the barrel. 
So for instance, this is a DCOE 40. Let me show you. If I was to measure the barrel on this carburetor, let's see. So this is 39.37. So in essence, this is a DCOE 40. And indeed, if you look on the typo, you can see it's a 40 DCOE. So that's the size of the barrel. As we discussed before, it's the barrel diameter that determines the CFM of the carburetor. However, uh, with DCOE carburetors, um, we are having what we call a primary and a secondary venturi. So if I take the trumpet off, which I've done already here, then I can take out my secondary venturi, which is this one right here. And they come in different sizes. For that, you would have to look at my other videos on how all this matches up. But then inside, we have another one, and this is the primary venturi. And this is the primary venturi. And this is smaller than the barrel size. And the reason for that is that we want to accelerate the airflow, and the more acceleration we have, the more vacuum we create on the venturi effect, and the better we can suck out the air fuel mixture out of the emulsion tube through the secondary venturi. So the primary venturi is reducing the CFM. So this is the one that you need to verify in any table if you're looking for DCOE carburetors. Other carburetors, uh, like the DGAF, they have fixed venturis, and this specific one is a 32, I think 35, or is it 36? So let's see if that is true or not. So here you cannot change the primary venturi because there is none. This is a fixed carburetor in terms of venturi, in terms of barrel size. So let's turn it over and have a look. Let's m measure this and see what we got. And we have right here, we got, well, to me this is about 36. And here we got 32. So for me, this is the 36-32 fixed barrel carburetor and that is actually what's going to determine the CFM. And here and we have a small table which is defining the CFM per barrel and per carburetor based on the venturi size. So this is the prime venturi I just showed you, that's that little insert. So in other words, if we are having a requirement for 260 CFM for the entire carburetor for my four-cylinder engine, where we just calculated, then I probably would need a carburetor which is going to provide 250 CFM, but that's lower than 260, so I want to step up, so I'm going to go to a 290 CFM capability for the entire DCOE carburetor, and then per barrel I have 145. And I will have to fit a Venturi of 34 millimeters inside the carburetor. Now obviously a 34 millimeter Venturi size isn't going to fit in a small housing of a DCOE 30 carburetor. So there are tables that show you which primary Venturi you can fit in which DCOE housing. Let me show you that. In this table you see the different types of Weber carburetors that can be fitted with main removable Venturis, also called jokes. We have just looked at a DCOE 40, but as you can see there's other types. In the DCOE 40, which is a physical dimension of a DCOE, the barrel size that is, we can fit all these different types of primary Venturis. You can see that 35 and 36, well 36 is the upper size. If you need a choke or primary Venturi, which is more than 36, it isn't going to fit in a DCU-E40. If I was to use a DCU-45, then I have more options. If I was having a DCU-E48, then I can even fit a 42 inside, and so on. So, depending on the housing of the carburetor, the barrel size, you can only fit specific primary Venturis, and it's the primary Venturi that will determine your CFM. Here, I measured the primary Venturi, on the carburetor that we had on the table, and that is a 36 millimeter, which is the maximum I can fit in a DCOE 40. Now that we figured out how much CFM we're going to need and how that relates to carburetors, 
we need to decide uh, on how many carburetors we're going to use, on how many barrels we're going to use, and that really depends on your specific car. If you have an engine that is having four cylinders and you have an intake manifold with four separate channels, so one per cylinder, and the cylinder head is also having four separate feeds, uh, not like on an MGB where you have a Siamese feed for uh, two cylinders, then you could actually fit four Weber carburetors onto that car. Now, obviously, you would have to be a little bit careful when you do this. You should not oversize the carburetors too much. Right? You've seen how you calculate the CFM. You've seen on how we do it per barrel. So in this case, one carburetor is going to fit two cylinders and one barrel fits one cylinder. So you will have to dimension like the example I took. And I think we had 260 CFM for that example engine. If I'm going to use this intake manifold, I'm going to need one quarter of that CFM per cylinder. 260 divided by four, that is about 65. So I need a carburetor that can deliver about 65 CFM per barrel. Now, the smallest primary uh, Venturi I can fit in a DCOE is about 28 millimeters. That gives me about 90 CFM. So that's already over the 65, but it will work. Six, it's, it's always better to be a little bit over it than too much under it. So that could work. But then you don't need to buy a DCOE 40. You can work with a DCOE 35 or a DCOE 30. Use two 30s and then use the 28 uh, primary Venturi in it. So that's the kind of balance you will have to do. Of course, if you have an engine with only two inlet ports and they are split amongst two cylinders, then you can use um, a single DCOE where one barrel will fit two cylinders. And then again, you can do the calculation. It's a pretty straightforward calculation. I'm not going to do it for every example, but you can do that for yourself. So that is very important to know. So we also talked about the VE, the volumetric efficiency. So what is that? When we did the calculation for the CFM for the engine, we mentioned VE, the volumetric efficiency. And I need to explain something on that. The VE is related to the loss you have in the intake system of your engine. The valves are causing a restriction. The air channels in the intake manifold, well, they cause restrictions. They may have sharp angles. They may have ridges. There may be all kinds of things uh, in that intake manifold that are going to restrict the airflow. The same thing is true for the actual cylinder head. Inside the cylinder head, the casting may not be perfect. So we're going to have losses. Now, depending on what kind of an intake manifold you have, depending on the preparation of your engine head, that loss will be more or less. So a normal classic car typically is having about a 75 to 80 percent um, efficiency. So we're losing about 15 to 20 percent or 25 percent of its CFM just because of the construct of that engine. If you're having a mild tuned engine whereby you took care of all the rough edges and you know of the intake manifold and you made sure that the diameter of your carburetor fits nicely and flush onto the intake manifold, then you might be having a much better efficiency factor. You might have larger valves maybe, or you may even have a mild cam. So all that improves the efficiency. So for that kind of a cylinder head, let's say stage two, you could count about 85 to 90% of VE. So use that figure for that, if that's the type of engine you have. If you really have a very well tuned and prepared and gas float cylinder head and intake manifold. Sometimes we call it porting. They have enlarged the ports. They took off the ridges. Then you may even have a 95 to 100 percent efficiency for the VE. So use the proper VE value for your specific engine. And these are just basic guidelines. It's always better to calculate a little bit more CFM than less. 
And all that is true for normal aspirated engines. If you, on the other hand, are having a turbo or a blower, then or a supercharger for that matter, then the VE will not be 1, but it will be 1.1, 1.2. It's going to be more than that. So use that figure, and these figures should be available basically when you buy your blower. And there are also calculations for it. But I have to say one more thing. Uh, be very careful with overdimensioning the uh, primary Venturi on your Weber carburetors or your fixed Venturi or underdimensioning it because it's going to cause you some problems. So let me t explain you that and then we will have reached the end of this video. So what happens if you overdimension the primary Venturi on a DCOE or you're getting another carburetor whereby the fixed barrel is oversized. Now oversizing is in practice a big issue because the airflow is going to lose speed and if you lose speed then you lose the Venturi effect. So this is not going to work too well on low RPMs. Your pickup will be terrible. So if you have a really slow pickup then there's a big chance that your carburetor is a bit oversized. So that's one thing. But it will work great on very high RPMs. So because there you're going to need uh, the max amount of airflow. That's why uh, with Weber carburetors you have these variable or changeable uh, primary Venturis and you can tune your engine accordingly for that with the same body. If the carburetor is undersized in terms of barrel dimensioning on a fixed barrel or the primary Venturi in your DCOE is actually too small, then you may have a very good pickup on the car on the low RPMs and the beginning of the mid-range. And that is because the air flows through the carburetor and it's very constrained in opening and the engine is still breathing. So we have a high airspeed which is improving the Venturi effect. So you're going to suck in a lot of fuel through the, air, uh, through the emulsion tube uh, into the actual uh, engine. But it will not work on higher RPMs because at that time the engine is needing a lot of CFMs and there is just not enough opening on the carburetor to let that volume through. So you will be capped off at a certain RPM and you will feel that you lose power on higher RPMs where you should actually have your power band. So be careful with that. So size it properly. Now one more note is that on DCOE carburetors, if you are increasing the primary Venturi size, you need to reduce the primary fuel jet and the other way around. So if you're reducing the primary Venturi, then you need to open up getting a larger prime uh, fuel jet. So I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did and I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for viewing and please, by all means, make the necessary comments. Bye-bye.